And coming in with the superior leftist take, Posadas John with the one dollar. I dreamed of dolphins and nuclear holocaust. So yes, a good dream. That's what I'm saying. Listen up, fucks. We're not wasting any more time with your goddamn dreams. I cannot believe, even for a fucking moment, that you thought I cared about your dreams. I have bamboozled you. You have been boozled, okay? I never gave a shit. Not even slightly. You know what I do give a shit about? Comedy. <laughs> See, I would like to consider myself a funny guy. I, I had to be, okay? Because in high school, you know, um, I wasn't like super attractive. But I was a horny boy, you know, I have to compensate. So I was a funny guy, and I made I was the class clown, I made the jokes, and I talk a lot now. So I like comedy. I think comedy, it's it's a it's a it's a uniquely and I say human here, not just because we're the only sentient species capable of engaging in human blah 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 blah. But I think there's something very uniquely personable, as in it's very descriptive of the human experience, the way in which we relate to humor. Um, because humor is and always has been really political it always has been and there is no greater evidence of this than observing the types of humor that circulate in different spheres of online influence the type of humor circulated in say more snowflakey lefty communities like uh, bread tube or gamer gazi or a bunch of trans rights discord servers and uh, and the edgy, irreverent, chapo, trap house humor that I t sort of uh, exemplify. And then you have the edgy, irreverent, like, 4chan, 8chan humor, which is, well, awful. And you've got, there, there's a whole, the reason why it's interesting to me isn't because different groups of people have different ways of making jokes. Because that's almost self-evident. The reason why it's interesting to me is because the way in which these jokes, the structure with which they are built, is actually integral to maintaining the ideology that they put forth into the world. So I wanted to take a look at a video. Cute little video right here. By none other than James Alsup. Now, James Alsup... And I go over this every time I do videos on him because I know some people are going to disagree with my interpretation of his values. James Alsop is a Nazi. Like a real one. Like an actual Nazi. Uh, 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 organized with far-right groups and white nationalists. Like Identity Europa. That kind of shit, you know? Nazis. So, why does a Nazi who has... Let's see, Jesus, nearly half a million subscribers. So, a Nazi who puts out videos, let's take a look, I... that tend to run in the ballpark of the low hundreds of thousands. See? Look. See, we've got the little honkler right here. That's cute. Calling 911 on black people is illegal. Trans fat activists lie about everything. The new N-word, I have a new job. So on and so forth. What's interesting is that in spite of the fact that this person, this literally, like, this would be a card-carrying Nazi in, in the streets of Berlin back in, in, in 1932, you know? This, this person, James Alsop, he's not subtle with his values. But what's interesting is that if you look through his videos, you'll see that the ones which are overtly about white nationalism, or, well... He might not call them overt. I'm sure he thinks he's being very subtle. But the ones that have a lot more white nationalist imagery, a lot more white nationalist dog whistles, these ones don't tend to get as many views. But, but, he will occasionally make a video, white privilege poem goes horribly wrong, right here with 300,000 views. Trans fat activist lies about everything. And I think the most egregious example, feminists are trying to ruin comedy with three million views you know there's something to be said about this um the fact that uh reactionaries are so indiscriminate 
with who they will get their anti-feminist propaganda from that they will storm on over to a literal Nazis videos. You know, the alternative doesn't happen here. Um, these these radically centrist, uh, uh, socially liberal, economically conservative, gamergate, uh, anti, you know, feminists. Um, the reverse doesn't happen. There aren't like far left channels, like like fucking Ma like third worldist Maoist channels, like UNRU or whatever, that get like you know about a hundred thousand views per video. But then they'll make a video on like Heh, why gamers are actually the most discriminated electoral group in American history, and that gets millions and millions of views. That doesn't really happen to us. And there's something to be said here about how willingly anti-feminists and other reactionaries will cohabitate with literal Nazis if it gets them their fix of hating Anita Sarkeesian or hating a fucking a female stand-up comedian for the given length of time for their little two or ten minute hate. Um, there's something to be said about that, but. Above all of the sort of meta layers of analyses we could get into, there is one triumphant sort of point, one superseding rhetorical mode that I want to share with you, okay? This is a very new way of thinking. I don't believe anyone's ever said this before. Um, conservatives aren't funny. Conservatives are not funny. They're just not. Comedy is and always has been pushed by left-leaning people. Because comedy relies on two things, subversion of expectation and pushing boundaries, which are, in, in essence, one thing, but that's an element of subversion of expectation, um, which is very important in comedy. And conservatives can't do this. The only way conservatives can do comedy, the only comedy conservatives do, is to point at a disadvantaged person, a member of society that they believe isn't living up to their standards, and to make fun of this person. That's all they can do. Because real comedy, real subversive comedy that really like makes you not just laugh, but afterwards you go like, oh, fuck, you know? That shit? That comes from critiquing a system. That comes from critiquing, satirizing, undermining, speaking truth to a broader systemic pattern, usually one that's a part of the status quo. And conservatives can't speak shit to the status quo. They can't do it. They're fundamentally, ideologically opposed to the idea of challenging people's understanding of the status quo, unless they're doing so in a way that encourages more regression, more oppression. They can't do it. Go, please, I encourage you, take a look at Steven Crowder's videos. How many times on this channel have we looked at Steven Crowder, and he's a fucking cringe lord? He's the fucking cringiest cringe lord in the fucking universe. It's pathetic. He sits there in his studio, allegedly a former comedian, you know, in the same way that people who buy their way into Harvard or Ivy League material. And he sits there, and he makes jokes. He unironically makes, like, gay jokes, like, with the lift, and he does the weak wrist thing this is like weak grade middle school like early 90s comedy and he has like a a group of people in his studio that he pays and they laugh and, and they they laugh cuz he's giving them the money it's it's really fucking weird and sad um and that's that's conservative comedy Th that's what it is. That's its essence. Steve, you say Steven Crowder isn't funny. You know, you 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 portend. But Steven Crowder is actually a perfect exemplification of everything there is to see from right-leaning comedy. Now, with all that being said, with my little intro, with my little spiel out of the way, I want to hop on into this video, okay? Listen the fuck up, you people. All right. Feminists are trying to ruin comedy. Now... James Alsup is not, I think, as Nazis go, especially unfunny. Having watched a few of his videos, I think that he is slightly better humorous cadence than a lot of right-leaning people, actually. Doesn't give him much ground to stand on here. Let's take a watch. Imagine being the only woman. And let me know how the voice to volume is or person of color, or queer person, or trans person. No Trump, no KKK, no sexist USA. Things are hard out here for a sister. Between Okay, whoa, okay. All right, we're gonna have to, whew, we're gonna have to point by point this shit. Oh boy. 
Imagine being the only woman, or person of color, or queer person, or trans person. No Trump, no KKK, no sexist USA. Okay, so what about ism, all right? It's very easy to see a video where people are complaining about an issue and then to complain about another issue. You could do this to literally anyone about literally anything. You could go to a fucking, a little like video vlog with nine views of a, of a 13 year old boy who's disappointed that he didn't get a PS4 for Christmas. And you could cut him off, be like, all right, yeah, that's pretty fun. No PS4, okay, what? Yeah, hey, listen, I've got my fucking starving African village on the line. Here, I've got it up against the mic. Would you like to tell all of them how sad you are? Yeah, huh, you little bitch? You could do this, you could do this literally about any, oh, turn the video down a little bit. Okay, so if I turn the video down, oh yeah, I have it pretty loud. There we go, zoop, beautiful. This this extremely lazy whataboutism where you just say there's a bigger issue or this issue is minor in comparison to others, this is the laziest form of critique. It's not an argument. It's not e like, <clears throat> sorry, <laughs> better luck next time, all sup. It's not an argument. Things are hard out here for a sister. So again, exactly. Um, I agree. I've done videos on how men are specifically disadvantaged in certain ways in the system, but I do not advocate for every single time a woman brings up an issue or an LGBT person brings up an issue, then you start throwing out the male suicide stats, okay? That's not, that doesn't, that's not really how society works. Because now, because I can do this, hey, James Alsup, you nice, ha, huh? things are hard out here for a brother, huh? Hey, maybe if you, maybe you people, maybe you dudes are killing yourselves because you just fucking suck, huh? What is this in the face of women being 10 times as likely to be sexually assaulted outside of prison, huh? Yeah, hey, you're, you're fucking, yeah, male privilege looking pretty good right now, huh? This is nothing. You don't solve social issues this way. It's, it's not like a, oh, feminists aren't, there aren't enough feminists in comedy? Well, men commit suicide. Oh, well, women get raped more. Ah, oh, well, men have custody. Court. This is nothing. This is, it's a bad faith argument. It's not how you address anything. Between hashtag me tooism and the gender pay gap, it's not. There's no such thing as hashtag me tooism. I have no idea what the fuck that means. Not everything needs to be a blank gate and not everything needs to be an ism. It's just the me too movement. That's it. Me too ism. What does that what does that mean? Never been harder to be a woman in America. Nobody is saying it's never been harder to be a woman in America. Literally no one is saying that. I have never heard anyone say that in my entire life, and I run some pretty lib cucky circles. Good straw man though. At least that is the case according to many on the left, including Really? Who? Including our best buddies over there at Now. Ah! Now this. Where in Now This? I hope, I hope James Alsop shows this. Because if he doesn't, I think he might be lying to me. Where in all this do they say women have never had it harder in America? I, re I really want to see that. I need to see that in this video. Because if he doesn't show that to me, I think he might have just lied right there. They've put out a truly inspiring video demanding that female comedians get empowered and mm -hmm. that there be more women in comedy. Imagine how easily triggered you have to be, by the way, to have a problem with this. Just fucking fathom. Just fucking imagine. I know what the video is going to be like. The video is pro we can pro we're probably going to watch it separately so we don't have to deal with his deceptive editing. But like, imagine getting so easily fucking offended. So, un so sensitive, like paper mache, like a thin veneer, like a shell of salt that is formed over a salt flat. It's just a little crack. What's that fancy pants way that you can cook the, the chicken or the fish where you do it in a big brick of salt? And then I've seen it in the Gordon Ramsay shows. And then you break it with a hammer. That's you, James Alsup. You're the little you're the little salt shell. You're salty and you break easily. You'll notice immediately they're calling for more women solely based on their gender, not for actual comedic ability or skill. No, that would be sexist. Well, I think they're calling for women with comedic ability and skill, but since a lot of women have been denied um, entrance into the stand-up game, not because of comedic ability or skill, but rather because they are a woman, that's what sexism is. It makes sense to me, then, that an effort to get women back in would focus not on an emphasis on skill, which is a, uh, a very subjective mode of denoting who is worthy of entering stand-up comedy, but rather of empowering all women, so that there is a greater opportunity for talented female comedians to rise to the top. Super simple stuff. If you don't get offended really easily. See, now this has assembled a real cast of mm, characters to feature in today's video, which will strike even the most neutral party right in their cringe receptors.
Thank you, James Also, We will answer their claims and demands in today's video and dig into the underlying reasons why there are more men than women in comedy. Hint, I'm ready. It has to do with evolution and... Oh, it... God. With evolution. I know this take because I've heard it from dumb fuck MGTOWs a thousand times. Um, women didn't evolve to be funny because women are the one, are the gatekeepers to sex and men have to prove their worth to women and they do so by making them laugh. I know this fucking take. It has no... Oh my god. Fucking bro science. Coming out. Coming out. James Alsup. Hit me up. I want to hear. I haven't heard it since middle school, but I'm ready. Being a mate. We'll do all of that and more, but first, a word from our friends over at Trade Genius Academy. Oh, Trade no. Genius Academy has just released their new tool for investors looking to make money on crypto. Always with the fucking grifts. Always with the fucking grifts. Hunter Avalon's been doing this shit with Raid Online. They did it, uh, somebody, I think it was actually James Alsop did it with the VPN encryption service. Now this, even Ben Shapiro shills. More. TradeGeniusAcademy.com, they're the people that I trust. All right, so women in comedy, women in comedy, a favorite topic for us here on this channel. Mm -hmm. In fact, last time I did a response video about women in comedy, the channel behind the original video actually ended up closing down their original content division. So, mm. all right, we weird flex. I, some might call that censorship. I know you would if the reverse was happening, but... Let's just say I have a storied history with this topic. Our favorite Facebook page, Now This, put up this video detailing specifically the problems that women have in comedy. Let's take a look. We need more women in comedy because comedy is power. Mm -hmm. When you tell jokes, you are in charge. You're on the mic. You might be outnumbered, but your voice is the loudest in the room. The loudest in the room, unless, of course, you're at a comedy club with Sam Hyde. <laughs> Was he, was that all he, ha was he just shouting, make me a sandwich, bitch? I couldn't tell because she was louder than him. Nice point, also. Good, uh, good conservative comedy coming out of that one, uh, that guy too, a classic. The story, you're telling it your way, that's power. More women should have that. I like the assumption here, the underlying assumption that getting up on stage and attempting to tell jokes is the best way for women to gain power in society. Nobody said it's the best way, James Alsop. You just slipped that word right on in there, you sneaky little devil. You just said that because it's a way of trivializing the thing they're saying. See, I could say something like um, a perfectly normal statement, like... Mm. I think that uh, brushing your teeth twice a day is, you know, a good way to primp up and get ready to go outside and, you know, talk to people. And then James Alsop, the sneaky little devil, he could come on in and he could say, hmm, Vosh thinks the best way to get ready for the day is by brushing your teeth twice a day. I mean, sure, I would think. I would think putting on clothes would be more important. But sure, Vosh, if you want to just go out there running around naked with your pearly white teeth and your dick flapping around in the wind, then be my guest. See, it turns out adding the term best to a call to action in regards to its efficacy makes a lot of things sound really stupid. Or was he making a joke? I can't tell. Never mind things like, you know, having a family or being a mother, things that actually give meaning and depth to your life. <laughs> oh, nice conflation right there. Um, in this little comedy advocacy bit right here, uh, they're talking about social power. Nothing gives women less social power than being a mother and taking care of a home. That I'm not saying you're a bad bitch if you do that. But if you do that, and it's totally fine if you do that, you're not really challenging the sort of presumptive set of standards women are expected to adhere to you know you're not really challenging the system uh see he switched that right there the ladies in the video are talking about getting social power of speaking truth to power of having the mic of speaking your voice and james also says huh, wouldn't you rather find meaning in taking care of kids and having a hat this is the this is a, a very traditionalist uh, conservative viewpoint. It's not even necessarily a Nazi one, but the idea is essentially that all women should be at home taking care of kids and what have you, and that this 
uh, this uh, ridiculous, delusional, liberal effort to get them all out of the house and working is damaging not only to society, because society benefits from the labor of men, because men are better than women, but it hurts the women, because women aren't in their natural place. It's nonsense, of course, that isn't backed up by any sort of evolutionary or anthropological evidence, but, I mean, they believe it, so it must be true. Now, getting up on stage drunk and stumbling through jokes to a bunch of drunk randoms at a dive bar is a much more fulfilling use of your time. See, the, the reductive here, for one, yeah, going out there and doing stand-up comedy, working on your routine, preparing it, reciting it into to the fucking bathroom mirror while sweating yourself dead before the show goes live, and then going out there and practicing it on a new crowd, having no idea how they're going to react, yeah, that makes a lot of people feel a lot more alive than just, oh, yeah, you're a woman. Oh, yeah, XY, uh, uh, fucking XY, no, sorry, XX chromosomes. Yep, just got to pop up. <sighs> just pop up the kids. You'll be fine. Just that's what you have to do. You can't do anything else. That's what you have to do. Um, everything that James Alsop is doing here serves the dual purpose of diminishing the role of women in comedy and their worthwhileness there. And also asserting the idea that women should, um, uh, uh, should have no place outside of the home. But, yeah, sure. I'm sure that if you take a little shaky fucking portrait mode iPhone video of one woman getting heckled at a tiny stand-up uh, bar, that you might see make the whole performative social act seem a little bit uh, a little bit trivial in comparison. I wouldn't say it's totally representative of, of uh, stand-up comedy, though. And if Brianna here thinks that women should be in comedy, perhaps she should start with herself. The position here is that it says comedian in the top left. Brianna Allen, comedian. Right there in the top left. Even if she wasn't a comedian, that's, a, again, very, very stupid. Hey, if you want a good thing to happen, shut up. But also, if you want it to happen, do it yourself. And then, of course, if she did it herself, James Alsop's follow-up video would be, You idiot! I didn't mean for you to do it, idiot! There's no, it's, again, it's a non-argument. It's just feeling, he's just doing anything in his power. And it, like a child throwing objects defiantly at the parent who's walking closer to bring them into bath time. He's just throwing out any argument he can to sort of trivialize the idea of women being in comedy. That women deserve recognition as comedians, but interestingly enough, Brianna, despite billing herself as a comedian, oh. doesn't seem to be willing to put in any work towards that goal. What? As a comedian, she's nowhere on the internet. There's nothing on YouTube, and the only Google result that comes back is a screenshot of this video. Hey, you made some salient points about women in comedy that I can't debunk, but I googled your name and couldn't find any results. Not an argument? What? Like, it, for one, it really doesn't matter whether this woman in particular, it really doesn't, whether this one woman does comedy. You can make salient points and not participate in the solution yourself. <laughs> like I do with veganism. Um, also, there are a thousand explanations as to how she could conceivably do comedic work and not be found by a Google search. Maybe she does the kind of work. I don't know what kind of work there'd be. I'm not a professional comedian that doesn't show up online that often. Maybe she contributes to scripts. Maybe she works under a surname. There are there are a lot of there are a lot of potential explanations here, buddy. But again, it doesn't matter. It it doesn't. For someone advocating more women in comedy, she's not doing a very good job of promoting her own brand and promoting her position as a comedian. Well, you complain about male suicide rates, but I don't see you operating a fucking hotline, James Alsop, okay? That's what I want to see. That's the shit I want to see. Wouldn't that be great? Because then all the dumb fucks who use the male suicide rate in a bad faith effort to sort of shit on women's problems, they, instead of w working on YouTube to create more filth that confuses and, you know, makes people stupid. Um, they can now work in a fucking uh, hotline center, okay, for to fucking help these people, okay? That's what you need to do, James Alsop. Put your money where your mouth is. How dare you invoke a problem without personally working towards its solution? You disgust me. If anything, James Alsop, I would go so far as to say you're divisive, like, uh, misogynist, anti-woman, sort of insular 4chan rhetoric is part of the shit that's keeping men socially reclusive and making them kill themselves. So not only are you not contributing to the solution you bad faith brought up earlier you're actually making it worse good one also that's real good you're doing great 
Every time, by the way, I just want you all to know, every time I do one of these videos, I never watch them beforehand. Every time I do one of these videos, my, I'm always crossing my fingers. Please, God, please. Give me one argument in here that I have to think about. It's no fun for me if every single argument that I just shit, like if it's nothing. And so far, this has been nothing. James, also, please, I know you're a bright guy, okay? I know you're bright as Nazis come, all right? You, the skull bumps hit the empathy part of your brain rather than the creative thinking part of your brain. Please, give me an argument in here that I have to take a hot second to work my way through before indicating that it's worthless. It seems like if you're going to do a video about women in comedy, you might want to actually get real female comedians. More women. You, again, no way to substantiate that and 100% irrelevant. What? All colors and shapes and shoe sizes. More women should get into comedy based on their weight. No, that is not what she just said. She said more women of all colors, shapes, and shoe sizes, meaning she does not want female comedians to be discriminated against for their appearance, which is a very real problem. Have you seen male stand-up comedians? A lot of them look like shit, okay? A lot of them look like fucking potato sacks full of, uh, full of coffee rinds. They are not... Generally speaking, male stand-up comedians are not the Adonis models that uh, people interested in men like, fuck themselves to the thought of, all right? However, a lot of um, female stand-up comedians have seen poor reception in large part due to a bevel of insults concerning their appearance. This happens pretty often. So she's saying that shouldn't happen. Not that, oh, hey, yeah, we need at least two or three more female comedians in here who weigh at least 300 pounds. Yeah, bring them in. Oh, this person? Oh, they never done a, they never done a stand-up? Nah, bring them in. Bring it. We just need the fatties in here. Yeah, bring them in. I don't think that's what she's saying, James Alsop. You good? You gotta clean something out of your ears? You're really missing the points in this video. I'm I'm dead center with your points. They're just really stupid and slippery. But you're missing the very obvious points from this video. It seems like that may inadvertently be inviting laughs for the wrong reasons. Illustrating the right there, that comment illustrating why fatter or less attractive women going into stand-up comedy are often uh, you know, maligned. How about encouraging women to actually get healthy instead of encouraging fat identity comedy? Nobody said fat identity comedy. There are plenty of fat male stand-up comedians who make plenty of jokes about them being fat and slobbish too. No one gives a fuck though, because all the fucking people in the audience when they see a dude go up on stage aren't holding their dicks in anticipation because they know every interaction they have with a woman, whether it be performative or interpersonal, has to lead to sexual climax. Um... But, uh, yeah, w way to prove the point, I suppose. And what was the other straw man in there? How about encouraging women to actually get healthy instead? Ah, uh, yes, and all videos about women's issues must also include a, a rigorous 18-minute calisthenics course, uh, or, or, or you have no right whatsoever to talk about the issue. ...of encouraging fat identity comedy. Should have that. Because comedy is business. Comedy is work. It might be fun and funny sometimes, but it's how I get paid. Well, for your sake, I hope you aren't only sometimes funny, otherwise... I'm only sometimes funny and I get paid. What, what do you mean? What? You're not going to last very long in the world of comedy, where, you know, getting laughs... Or again, the one portrait mode video of a, of a fucking uh, dive bar of a woman responding poorly to getting heckled. Wow. Literally is your only job. Sometimes... Wait, what was that? They were like, they were like, comedy is work, and also was like, heh, better be funny then, and showed the same clip from earlier. Okay. Good argument. Got him. Got him. The nickels and Sprite, which I love. This part is great. They admit that being a comedian doesn't even pay very well, but they uh huh. That goes the same for a lot of artistic pursuits. Um, I have a, a fair number of friends who work in like the fucking art game, like the independent artist where they do commissions on Twitter and stuff, and they used to do it on Tumblr before Tumblr shut down the porn. And you motherfuckers know that all of my art friends draw porn. Um, so, so what's what's the point here? Yeah, it's very often, uh, very often, our artistic pursuits um, sort of relegated to poor pay unless you really make it. They're insisting that women join the ranks of the comedy cannon fodder class. So this is a really cute and disingenuous argument. He's about to say, or he's going to say something at least implying, hey, if you bitches care so much about the huh, pay gap between men and women, why are you encouraging women to go into a field that doesn't pay much? To which I say, these are separate issues, my dude. 
What, are you saying that uh, no women should be encouraged to be artists or social scientists if you're a feminist? Because if you do so, you're not... Well, actually, well, fuck, they do say that. Because there are the fucking comics where they're like, Heh, you want there to be more women in STEM? Well, why didn't you get into STEM, you gender studies major? It's great. All fucking four billion women become this interchangeable mass of, of human capital that have to move and shift uh, to perfectly orient themselves around the uh, ideology of the feminist. Otherwise, the feminist is being hypocritical. Very compelling. No, James Alsup, we can simultaneously advocate for women to get higher paying jobs and get paid more. And also for them to go into challenging fields that do not typically reward much money. When I think of having power, like the women alluded to earlier, getting paid in pocket change and soda isn't the first thing that comes to mind. The, uh, a non-argument? Are you saying that um, that that the, they're not going far enough? Are you saying that not only there, should there be more women in comedy, there should be women in comedy and there should be a government subsidy? What the fuck are you talking about? This argument proves my point, if anything. Also, social power and wealth are two entirely different things. The sort of confidence and the social acumen that are built up when you engage in this circuit of stand-up comedy is it's indescribable now of course i haven't done it but i know people who have done it and i know what they have described to me okay so yeah not getting paid much is a bit of a downside however the confidence and the social rigors that you get by putting yourself through all of that are unquestionably aspects of power unquestionably not all power comes from money and even if it didn't, that would just support our argument. I don't, how am I supposed to respond when he makes an argument in my favor, but badly? I don't, it's, it's very strange. But still, if you get treated differently from men when you're doing the job, that's uncool at best and illegal at worst. Oosh, I love the implication here, fam. If you don't. Fam. You, you, you can't say fam when you're a fucking Nazi, dude. You can't say fam when you're a Nazi get the same reception as a male comedian that is morally wrong and perhaps even illegal no no one said about not getting the same reception she said not being treated the same which could also mean treatment from venue owners and uh, stage managers see it get little slippy little slippery also up right there it's fat it's incredible to me by the way literally every single argument that he's made so far has been dishonest what Who died? It's YouTube chat died. Oh yeah, I don't guys, I don't give a fuck about YouTube chat. Move to my fucking chat. Anyway, um notice by the way how literally every single point made by James Alsop so far has been a deliberate misinterpretation of the point being made in the original video. Not once has he cogently responded to the actual points being made. It's really, really pathetic. Um this is how weak the argument of a Nazi is, and this is why I say they always lie. They understand that an upfront, direct, point-by-point -point breakdown would leave them out in the fucking cold, because their ideology has been disproven time and time again, on every single level, in academia and in the streets. But the only way, and they know this, the only way they can keep the illusion of intellectual consistency, of intellectual validity going, is if they exclusively deal in straw men. And so far, every single point in this video has been a straw man. Every last one. If the crowd doesn't like- And again, we have this fucking video. Is, is this- You know stand-up comedy happens, like, often? This is weird. It's just the one video of a dude being sexist at a woman and her responding in, like, an unfunny way. That's it. This, that's all that there is to be shown in this video laugh at every one of your jokes as much as they laughed at the male comedian's jokes that is a nobody said laughing as hard at your jokes as la uh, as uh laughing as hard at your jokes as they did with the male comedian's jokes just about how you're treated not necessarily reception microaggression and you're going to report them and get them in trouble with the comedy police what the fuck does he think they're saying like that people in the crowd who didn't enjoy the comedy will like they'll get them arrested what the fuck argument does he think he's making here Perhaps male and female comedians tend to get different reactions because nobody's talking about reactions. Holy shit. Male comedians tend to be funnier than female comedians.
I mean, I would generally agree that by way of sort of cultural osmosis, men are encouraged to be funnier because the tools that are required to be funny, like confidence, charisma, um, jovial self-deprecation, in addition to broader social factors that are outside any individual's control, like giving men more charitability when it comes to their public speaking, giving men's uh, words more worth uh, uh, in public speaking, these factors combine to make men funnier. But that's not intrinsic. That's not a biological thing. That's not an evolutionary thing like he's going to make the argument for later in this video it's just a product of social factors much in the same way that white people had better literacy than black people back in the 1860s that's not biological it's just the product of social conditioning this is very easy there's a reason why almost every high-ranked and well-regarded stand-up special on IMDb is performed by a male comedian. Yeah, and you can make the exact same argument about literally anything in regards to men or in regards to white people. Men and white people stand on top of society for the most part. So they're going to so they're going to be at the top of the lists, obviously. But hey, we're making rounds, okay? And Amy Schumer's heavily promoted leather special only got a 2.9 out of 10. Yeah, all right. To be fair, I'm not a fan of Amy Schumer, but the 2.9 out of 10 probably had more to do with the massive internet hate mob over her, like, stealing jokes and being a fat lady than it did over, like, genuine critical reception. The fucking conservatives do this all the time. They'll be like, heh, everyone hated Battlefield 5. That's why it was rated at a negative 0 0.7 on, uh, on, on, on fucking, um... Game critic or meta score or whatever. Um, sure, but it might also be because there was a massive internet hate campaign driven by anti feminists to complain about the lady on the front of the cover, which had basically nothing to do with the rest of the game. Like the whole, like all of Battlefield 5 was basically the same. They just had like the one lady on the cover. And this somehow plummets the, the meta score uh, of Battlefield 5 by a massive degree. So I don't really think I don't really think it's a legitimate uh, interpretation of the quality of a of a comedy special in this respect. Even the most popular female comedians in their best specials only hover around the mid to low 6s. Why is this? Well, is it because of biology, James Alsop? Cuz everything that I say a product of social factors. This is backed up in academia. You're about to tell me some feelings. Is it because audiences are sexist and bigoted against female comedians and they just want to see a man get up there and talk about man stuff? See, this is this is a very reductive way of looking at how like social pressures um lead to people being f funnier or better received than other people. When I say that male comedians get better reception. I'm not saying that everyone in the audience is fucking sexist, okay? I mean, we're all sexist in some tiny imperceptible way at the very least, but in regards to, like, this active vitriolic misogyny that James Alsop is facetiously alluding to, I've never said this exists, and nobody says this exists. Only that there are factors in society and in our upbringing that lead to different ways in which women approach comedy and different ways in which we interpret female comedy. It's really that simple. That's not the same as everyone being sexist. This is the same line that little fucking demagogues like this have been pushing in regards to Gamergate for ages. Oh, Anita Sarkeesian says that some games may reflect pernicious elements of our treatment towards women, she's basically saying if you play this video game, you're a fucking sexist. And you're not a sexist, are you? Go email her and tell her you would rape her to death. Like, that, it's the same... It's the same logic. It, it holds true in pretty much all reactionary scenarios, where you overreact to any perceived accusation of bigotry. And by the way, being offended at being accused of being a bigot, coming from James Alsup, a Nazi. The irony is not lost on me. Yeah, I don't think so. There's a lot of theories about why male comedians are funnier than female comedians, but here's mine. Well, okay, so, he is, so he's about to give us his feelings. Again, here are mine, okay? To be perfectly clear, I want to be a super duper clear with this one, okay? So all of us can... Our big brain knowledge, okay? We can all join our heads together. And a, a so great will our transference of thought be that our head unions will glow like a sun on the surface of the planet, burning out all other life and reducing this planet to a dead husk of a world, okay? Here's, here's my brain blast, all right? There are certain things that make comedy possible. Confidence, uh, introspection, um, uh, jovial self-deprecation charisma and an ability to recognize um, that you have the turn and place to speak a, a, a point of confidence but it's 
possible to be confident and quiet. To be a comedian, you have to be pretty bombastic. These are characteristics that are disproportionately socialized into young men and not very much socialized into young women. So, as a product of socialization, women are going to be a little bit worse, on average, with comedy than men are going to be. Then you have broader social factors. Social factors such as we, in general, tend to... Uh, derive more worth from the words of men. This has been sociologically proven. That women tend to get talked over and the things they say aren't taken as seriously. Uh, this has also been sociologically demonstrated. That women um, and their worth is often reduced to their sexual um, characteristics, like their big boobies or their appearance, so that if there is a lady up on stage and she's talking about like, ah, you know, I'm, I'm, a fucking, I'm fucking gross, I shit myself. Like, you know, what... Louis C.K., one of the most respected comedians in history, has done. Because there's an association of, of women with sexual pleasure and a, a deviation from that expectation causes frustration, that can adversely affect how we perceive female comedians. All of these things can. So all of these social factors, all of which have been sociologically demonstrated, this is all factual information that I'm showing, that I'm presenting to you here, contribute to women not doing as well in comedy. It's really that simple. Okay, let's hear the Evo psych take. In our society, the pressure falls on men to seek out and find and mm -hmm. win a partner they can... Remember what I predicted earlier? ...ultimately marry and have kids with. In this courtship process, there are a lot of ways to impress a woman. You can be rich, you could have incredible good looks, you could be very... <laughs> There are a lot of ways to impress a woman. You can be rich. You could have incredible good looks. <laughs> okay. You could be very fit. You could be highly intelligent, etc. A lot of men don't check any of these boxes. They may have average looks and be in decent shape, but they don't have a great job, see? Or they're smart and have a good job, but they're a little bit on the bigger, fluffy side. Another way to impress women is, of course, through personality. For men, being funny and being a good storyteller are traits that many women are attracted to. Beginning when we're kids, but especially as we get older and become teenagers and adults, this fact leads men to adapt and develop a sense for humor and comedy that women don't often have. Two counterpoints. For one, why, if this is the case, are gay men often considered to be very funny? And gay men tend to do well in comedy specials. If there's not this external socialization which requires them to appease the female standard, why? For two, if, why is it that men have to impress women? You've just given a bunch of examples as to how men need to do this and this and this and this and this to win the heart of a woman, that these social expectations lead to them developing certain characteristics. Why do men have to make that gap? See... Every time I open up Tinder, okay, I'm rolling in it, all right? I never really got the feeling, not at least not past high school, that I had to, like, work to impress women. I just never, I never got that feeling, you know? If anything, I feel like people are competing for my time, especially now that I'm a public figure. A small one. So, again, Why? And we see why that is, right? Women don't face the same pressures that men face when it comes to finding a partner. If a woman is moderately attractive and in good shape, she'll have no trouble finding men of high quality that will want to take her out on dates and marry her, etc. Remember the incels video or the incels stream that I had just a little while ago where I talked about this, um, this notion of female hypergamy being one of the defining characteristics of the incel worldview? That's literally what he's describing right now. He's literally saying that men have a super hard time getting women and the high quality men who are super ripped and smart and whatever and very pretty and have the big Chad jawline can get whatever women they want, but they... Uh, tend to relegate themselves to the higher tier women but these all ladies have to do is be like kind of okay looking and they can get like basically whoever he's literally he's literally repeating the hypergamy talking points so james also i reiterate since you are repeating incel talking points which have been sociologically demonstrated to increase the degree of social isolation uh loneliness and male suicide don't you think it's a little bit hypocritical of you to invoke male suicide as a talking point to dismiss women's issues when you yourself are contributing to the social tendencies which make it worse a fascinating question the answer to which is yes you, james Alsop is bad and an idiot 
So we can see why this ability to think comedically is more developed in men than it is in women. It explains why there are so many successful male comics and so few we've done female comics. E we've, we've done this before. Even when we see rampant feminism seemingly taking over every other aspect of society. Rampant feminism seemingly taking over every other aspect of society. The chicken little sky is falling approach to social change. Ah, yes, the civil rights movement. Hmm. Well, ever since the... This is... I'm about to say something that people have unironically said, by the way. Hmm. After the negrofication of our schools, I don't know how our white children can be expected to learn arithmetic anymore. Huh. After the blackfication of Detroit. Like, this is every time. Reactionaries. Every single fucking time. Every time there's a social movement. They do this shit. They did it with the women's suffrage. They did it with the fucking gay rights movement. They did it during Stone. They did it back with the fucking hippies. They did it back during the civil rights movement. They did it with the Black Panthers. They did it with slavery. Literally every single time, there's a movement for positive social change. People like James Alsop and his dipshit followers will screech and whine about how that social movement is corrupting and taking over society, and yet somehow, in spite of it taking over society, the um, power dynamics which secure men and male interests on top seem to be largely unchanged. You're kind of putting forward a counter-argument to your own point here, James Alsop. I would like for you to find me these these industries of these of power of social credence that are being consumed by feminism and dominated by women because to my knowledge they're still pretty much entirely run by men. That's pretty much where we're going with this. So why bring up the feminism feminismification of society at all if it doesn't have anything to do with your point and you provide a counterexample to that point right here in this video. Is it just to remind your fucking smooth brain followers that feminism exists so they get really angry at this point of the video? So they're watching through the video, and as you make the point, you're, they're like, <sighs> women are stupid, and I can't get a girl because I'm not a Chad. <laughs> Whatever. This is just what it is. <sighs> feminism! Feminism! Like, a little hyperbolic, but I, un I really unironically do think that's why... Because the reactionary videos tend to do this, where they'll just jump in with those points. And I think they do it to just get, just get, get that little burst of anger going. That really, that emotional appeal. Just get, the, just get them spicy, right here in the heart. Imagine being the only woman, or person of color, or queer person, or trans person in the lineup at a stand-up show. That makes the show <laughs> diverse. Wow, imagine that. Diverse people liking different things, and as a result, are attracted to them in different numbers. What? Wait, so the ladies are like, hey, it's not very diverse if there's like one black person or one woman in a, in a stand-up line. And James Alsop's response is like, heh, diversity means people liking different things? What? Can, can you clarify? This is starting to sound a little bit like Gamergate for stand-up. <laughs> ah, <it's... sighs> you know, there's a terrible loneliness to being right all the time. I have to say. The fact, the fact that, that I can foresee... You plebeians don't understand. You there in chat, you just have your temporally locked mindset. But me? No, no, no. No, 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 no. I know. He's appealing to the Gamergate crowd here. This is a very deliberate strategy by James Alsup, uh, a Nazi, to appeal to a mostly non-Nazi group of fucking edgy, irreverent, angry, lonely white teenagers who followed Gamergate by using their lingo, by referring to their struggle, by invoking feminism and the feminization of society, um, this is all part of a broader strategy to bring in people to the alt-right. And I would be willing to bet this video alone probably saw, in the long term, hundreds or maybe even thousands of Gamergate reactionaries down the alt-right pipeline. Easily. I would make that bet with my life. That, uh, that people who otherwise would have gotten over it are now literal fascists because of this video comedy the MC introducing you says now we've got a lady coming to the stage correct me if I'm wrong I mean yeah that's pretty patronizing wrong but that facial structure those hips those shoulders oh we all know where he's going with this one don't we 
Frozen hands. I don't think that's a lady, fam. Facts don't care about your feelings, James Alsop. Every medical organization worth its salt on the face of the earth recognizes the existence and legitimacy of trans women and trans men. I'm sorry if that hurts your feelings, though. Some women got some women got narrow hips and wide shoulders and big hands. What are you gonna do? Ugh. And then, even without the lady intro, you, as the only woman, you have a big job. Dope comics just have to spend the next eight minutes proving that they're funny. But you, you have to spend the next eight minutes proving that women are funny. Actually, I would really love to hear James also respond to this because the fact that minorities are representatives of their minority group in basically every interaction they have with a broader audience like th like this is the most this is the most indisputable fact in the fucking universe okay no you really don't if you're a funny oh. comedian people won't complain about the fact that you're a woman they'll notice it yeah, no they no they they yeah no they absolutely will um you can like every there are strong women where people there are like strong women and people complain like yeah but she's still a woman there are smart women who are academically or or intellectually or mechanically gifted and people will still complain that she's a woman okay the idea that sexism goes away if you're talented is not backed up in data at all it's just a feeling james also has or more likely something that he is now telling a lie about Sure, because comedy is disproportionately male, but you're not up there to crusade against the gender comedy gap. All you know, they never said they were. You have to do is tell your jokes and, more importantly, be funny. And by the way, again, stuff like this, where women complain about not getting the same reaction as men, that is not going to fly if you try to do that bit at a comedy show. If female, they never said they were going to. And also, this isn't like an example of a woman not being funny. This is a heckler. Comics insist on playing the woman card to imply they're being oppressed when they perform. It is no surprise. No, literally nobody says this. Nobody's doing this. He's just making this up. This is all all sub feelings. They're not getting the same laughs as men. People go to a show for a good time, not to get lectured about what evil people they are. L yeah, liter yeah, that's something we can. I'm sorry. Very strange, James Alsop. Maybe I should go and watch the full Now This video on my own um, because I feel like I missed the part where they said that female comedians should go up there and make a spiel on how women are oppressed and everyone in the audience is sexist for not liking them. I missed that part of the video. It's, oh, fuck, James Alsop. I was so close to agreeing with you. I really wish, ah, man, if only you would put that part of the video in there where they all said that when they go out there, they're going to accuse all of the audience of being sexist if you would put that part of their video in your video it really would have strengthened your point it's a shame you didn't do it maybe just an editing mistake on his part also again to reaffirm the central point here the idea that um the idea that like women and people of color or lgbt people are generally thought of as tokens who have to represent the virtuousness of their entire minority group this is an indisputable sociological fact in every walk of life there's a fucking XKCD comic on it. Like, that that means it has to be true, right? Yeah, I'd love pancakes. Look, it's the simplest shit in the world. Load the fucking comic. I'm streaming. I have no patience whatsoever for this fucking load time. I cannot believe. The point of Googling is to be... Uh, the point of this is to be punchy. I cannot. I cannot believe it is taking this long to load. There we go. Easiest shit in the world. Is it an XKCD comic? Yes. Is it also sociologically proven? Yes. Easy peasy. Women have to live up to much higher expectations and work twice as hard to do it. Oh, and get paid less? More women in comedy would mean that each individual woman doesn't have to represent her entire gender. Oh. Yep, this is a fact. Imagine, for example, and you don't, this doesn't have to be an example, okay? This is just like how life is, all right? Um, imagine if um, you are a comedian and there are 20 stand up comedians who are each going to do like an eight minute circuit for that night on a big stage, okay? There are 20 of them, 19 of whom are white, and you're the black guy, okay? Now, as the black guy, you don't know if the audience is racist. But you probably know that at least some of the audience is racist. Now, you don't think you're going out there to, like, an Alabama KKK rally or anything like that. 
unless you're going out to an Alabama KKK rally, in which God help you. But you probably just stica- like you probably uh, just as a matter of statistical probability, there are probably going to be people in the audience who have mixed to negative feelings about black people. That's just a fact. So when you go on out there, you recognize that you're at something of a disadvantage because I really, I really do not think that there are many stand-up crowds out there that have a disproportional bias against white men. So you're probably, you're probably starting with a back foot back. You're, you're starting from a bit of a disadvantage here. And when you go on out there, you've recognized something, okay? You're the only black person here. Not in the audience, I mean, in the stand-up line, okay? Which means that when people think of this night, they're going to think of an indiscriminate sea of white guys, of varying levels of talent, of varying levels of, you know, humor and comedic uh, uh, value, and there's going to be one black guy. One. So you think, okay, that's not necessarily a bad thing, right? I mean, people recognize, like, people in the audience recognize that, you know, we're all just people, and even if I don't do that well, I'm not a representative of my race, I'm just a person who didn't do that well. This is only my third time doing stand-up, I can't be expected to nail everything, I feel like there's a lot of pressure on me. But, I'm gonna have faith in the audience, okay? I'm going to do my best, and I'm going to hope that people are unduly uncharitable to me. And you go on out there, you go on out there, onto the stage, stage and you look over the crowd and who do you see in the audience you see james Alsup with a camcorder and you can all you can see it playing in your head you can see it playing in your head james Alsup's next video title black comedian you know black comedy not that great all right and you know what that video is going to be so i recently went to a stand-up comedy show and um Take a look at this, and then it's the and it's like the like a four second bit of your eight minutes total doing a performance where you kind of like stammer a bit. Yeah, as you can see, and as you look at the data here, it just seems like black people aren't as good as com at comedy. The reason why I know this is because this is the exact thing that is being done in this video. In this video, he is using one portrait clip of a like what a minute at most to demonstrate a truth that he is trying to broadcast about the fundamental um uh incompatibility between women and comedy or women's inherent handicap at it people like james Alsup reinforce the idea james Alsup is trying to disprove here alternatively more women in comedy would just result in more unfunny women getting up on stage and doing bad routines which would then reinforce the stereotype that women aren't funny well, yeah, that would be unfortunate. Thankfully, a lot of the reason why women aren't considered funny has a lot to do with social expectation and with discrimination at the managerial level, with them booking gigs and getting treated right at shows, proper security and what have you. Um, so I think that if we took a broader approach towards the inclusion of women in comedy, we wouldn't just be getting the women up in the fucking dregs up there on stage. We would actually be increasing the likelihood of very genuinely funny women getting on up there. Maybe if um, uh, stand-up comedy wasn't so fucking hostile to uh, women, which it really fucking is, it really, really is, then maybe more women who do comedic work in other aspects, like, say, script writing, or as an actor, or a bunch of other things that can be comedically you know, inclined but don't necessarily involve stand-up, maybe then they would be encouraged to get into stand-up. Maybe if you make the field more appealing to women, more women will do better jobs in it. This is how everything else works in an open market. I don't know why it wouldn't work that way for uh, for women. It's the exact same way if a company is trying to hand, uh, hire an engineer. If you want good engineers for your project, you probably want to advertise that you're going at an above market um, wage, that you're going to pay them that with benefits and what have you. And you want to make the position accommodating, like you want to give them benefits with like, hey, we'll give you a local apartment, we'll give you transport to and from the work. Because in doing so, you're not going to just enable any old person to get on up there. You're going to be bringing in more talented people from around the world to meet those expectations. Pardon me for being all capitalist for a second, but what James Alsop is doing right here is ignoring one of the most fundamentally true aspects of market competition. Maybe these people should focus on actually finding quality women comics. Instead well, again, that would be part of 
pushing for women to be in stand-up comedy. Instead of just stuffing a show full of women for the sake of having more women. Literally nobody said that. Nobody said they were doing that. Nobody said they wanted to do that. James Allsup, are we, are we even watching the same video? Do you think James Allsup hit the invert switch on his fucking Adobe Premiere, like, video editing software, so that all of the clips from, um, the now this video that he wanted to show ended up getting cut and all the parts he didn't want to show ended up getting included because he keeps making a bunch of points that rely on points that were never made in the original video. More women in comedy would mean that people would finally stop talking about two kinds of comedy. Comedy and women's comedy. What two kinds of comics? Comedians and, oh, God help us. Comedians. I admit I have never heard this comedian's term, but I but guarantee you James Alsop is about to throw a fit over it because he gets triggered really easily. We need enough. Oh, I was wrong. I got triggered preemptively. Lib cucks destroyed again. I have some water. Women in comedy so that being a woman, being a person of color, being a queer person, a trans person is no longer different. Some of the most popular comedians on Netflix and IMDb are black comedians like Cat Williams and Dave Chappelle. Mm-hmm. That is because black people have fought very hard, tooth and nail, for legitimacy in the, um, in the entertainment sphere. And they have, for the most part, succeeded. But it wasn't always the case. Did you know that back in the, um, in the uh, uh, post-slavery period, like the late um, 19th and early 20th centuries, um, that black people's slow, methodical inclusion into um, places of worship, their own style, like black churches are different from white churches in the South for the most part, um, into music, into a uh, comedy and public routines of any kind, basically any entertainment field, sparse as they may have been comparably back in the early 20th century and late 19th century, that when black people started to push their way into this, people made the exact same arguments about them that James Alsop is making now. When they did poorly, people shat on them relentlessly. People thought it was a different kind of comedy. People thought black people just aren't as capable of engaging in comedy or music or what have you because of their skull shape. Um, everything that he is talking about now, that is to say James Alsop is reflective of the perpetual reactionary attitude towards the inclusion of new marginalized demographics into the social sphere. It is the same argument every time, every single time, every time. It doesn't change. Please, I encourage all of you watching this stream, please go familiarize yourself a little bit with the history of black inclusion into public entertainment, into media, I suppose. Please, I encourage you. It's the same. And people, and James Alsup would, he, again, he's a Nazi, so he would. He would unironically be down there back in the 1910s talking about how black people need to stay in their lane because a black comedian now and again is fine if they're good, but a push to bring in more black comedians, well, that'll just bring in more of the dumb Negroes. He would make that exact same argument. Like, easily. Uh, this isn't a straw man. It's, it's literally the same. Um... Why don't I debate James? I, well, I, he's much larger than me. I mean, I might get around to it sometime. I don't know. And they're popular because they're funny. And by the way, I'm not going to buy this whole coalition of brown people and transgenders and women narrative when it was SJWs like this that attacked Chappelle for making a joke about transgender people on his last comedy special. So you can't call for people of color and LGBT people and women to work together for inclusion in stand-up comedy when Dave Chappelle made a transphobic joke and people criticized him for it? Fascinating. Wow, that coalition sure did break down easily. Hey, we black and POC and LGBT people are going to work together to form a cohesive media presence. Then James Alsop responds, Hey, didn't one of you tweet at Dave Chappelle? So much for leftist unity, you fucking faggots. Like, that... <laughs> <laughs> like, what are these non-arguments? If you can't take a joke, comedy is probably not the right venue for you. Or well, wait, there's a difference between not being able to take a joke and I love that conflation right there and calling somebody out on a shitty, uh, like, transphobic joke. It's not that you didn't get the joke. It's that you got it and it was shitty. What James Alsop, are you, are you asking that no one should be able to criticize 
stand-up comedians or if you're doing so you didn't get the joke is, is all critique of stand-up comedians just you not getting the joke what's your problem with female comedians then shouldn't they all be 10 stars because anyone who didn't like the joke is just not getting it i don't understand what point he's trying to make more interesting we're just comics more women in comedy is also good business more women in comedy means more jokes more jokes about more things more jokes means more laugh which means more dollars <laughs> That's math. To disrupt the kindergarten economics lesson here, but... Well, James Alsop, you're the one who doesn't get the idea of incentivizing market saturation. So I don't know if you want to make fun of other... I'm not... I'm a fucking anarchist. And I know more about free market economics than you do, James Alsop. And by the way, everything that lady just said is completely correct. How many industries have, over the past 50 years, made a deliberate, um, a, a deliberate effort to more holistically represent, like, their market base um, based on gender? Like, to include more women in the purchase of home computers or games like with mobile games like to include um there have been pushes to get men into like skincare and uh, uh and, and lotion and shampoo and body wash and what have you all of this there is so much economic data to suggest that getting more people involved and not arbitrarily like separating people by gender is just good business just good business that's not actually how it works. It is. If female comedians get on- Again! Five times! Buddy, James Alsop, this is pathetic. The same tiny portrait video of one per- of by, by the way, if this is your evidence that female comedians are kind of shit, this is bad to use because this heckler is like really fucking weird. Look at him. He's like saying for her to make her a sandwich that he did earlier in the video when it was represented. And now he's like on the ground on his hands and knees. This is like really fucking weird, okay? I'm not a lady, but if I was getting like my start in stand-up and I was doing my routine at dive bars and someone started doing this shit at me, I would also be pretty fucking weirded out, okay? This is like this is this is atypically like aggressive um uh heckling and this is all you have to demonstrate your narrative that women shouldn't be like uh represented uh, more in stand-up comedy this is it this is what you have like this is this is like the weakest like if we accept this logic if we accept this logic then we have to accept the much more sound logic of our Behold the Master Race, which showcases, uh, 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 let us say, unimpressive examples of Aryan supremacy. Misogynist, incel, white supremacist, pedophile. the you know the genetic elite like if we're if we're accepting the argument that like one offhand example uh of um of poor performance demonstrates holistically the inability for women to engage in public comedy um or, or in stand-up comedy then we have to accept every single anecdote ever made about white people just being shit okay we have to by the way this is a fun subreddit if you don't mind body shaming <laughs> This is pretty cute, I think. Look, see? Look, this is the subhuman, the Untermensch, and this is a modern-day neo-Nazi. Look, it's like the, the grandson. That's pretty cool. Anyway, it's just a non-argument. It's just a feels argument. He feels so strongly about this, the all-sub, the subster, but he can't substantiate his points. How sad. How unfortunate. On stage and are absolutely garbage, people are going to stop buying tickets to shows, and the businesses and clubs will suffer as a result. No. Again, nobody said just throwing a bunch of women on stage. They said um, using incentives and engaging in sort of social pressures to get rid of the blocks that women face when trying to efficaciously engage in stand-up comedy. It's that simple. They'll be up there and they'll be good. Nobody's talking about throwing a bunch of hacks up there to embarrass themselves. This guy, James, keeps showing Sam Hyde, who donated thousands of dollars to the Daily Stormer. Oh, so that pathetic guy who was unironically as like 50 year old, like 50 years old, was making make me a sandwich jokes and pathetically bowing on the ground. That guy is a neo-Nazi who's donated thousands to the Daily Stormer. Yikes. Oh, that's those are the circles that James Alsop runs in. Here, wait, we can look. Yes.
There we go. Oh, this is the person who created the Million Dollar Extreme thing. Regardless, remember the all right? Yeah, 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 the Million Dollar Extreme guy. Wait a second, he's 34? Yee. Yeah. Yeah, ooh. The master race indeed. <laughs> God damn. Well, Godspeed. Garbage, people are going to stop buying tickets to shows and the businesses and clubs will suffer as a result. People should do more math. Women are good at that too. Because comedy is so important. If comedy is so important. Uh, what, what do you have to say to this one? Important? Why haven't you told a single joke in the first two minutes of this video? What? Hey, here's a, like, what, wait, 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 what? Okay, so in order to make in order to make a video on women getting into comedy, first, we need the 18-minute calisthenics routine, okay? You need to be telling jokes in the video. Everyone in the video has to be engaged in stand-up comedy to the extent that their, like, name, a uh, Google search of their name brings up, um brings up, uh, 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 like, results of their performances. And you need to, I assume, since you have to tell jokes, you also have to do the exercises in the calisthenics routine. So essentially, every video any woman makes about any problem has to be three hours long, in which they complete a series of arbitrary tasks set forth by a Nazi arguing in bad faith in order to demonstrate the sincerity of their, um, of their, ar of their argument. Comedians help us process the day's events. Comedy, maybe especially now, helps us feel like we're not losing our minds. If we have only one set of faces and voices helping us do that, we're missing out. Last time I checked, uh. YouTube wasn't being run by a pack of white supremist misogynists with a no transgenders or blacks rule. What, the, what does this have to do with anything? Nobody has mentioned YouTube so far. If you want to be a comedian, go for it. Put your videos on YouTube, and if you're funny, people will respond. Also, open- Just make a YouTube video, bro. There are no systemic problems, bro. If you don't like what's happening, just make a YouTube video, bro. YouTube is open to everyone, bro. Mike Knights do exist. Of course, if you're not funny, then there's always a career making whining videos like this for NowThis.com, blaming white people and men for your failure in comedy. Literally nobody in this video has blamed white people and men. Look at how fragile. Ooh, paper mache Allsup. Jesus Christ. James fucking Allsup. What a bitch baby. Oh, if you, can, if you couldn't make it a comedy, at least you could... Make videos making fun of white men, huh? That doesn't hurt anyone. What the fuck? You're so fucking fragile. Allsup, I'm a white dude. I'm, I'm, I'm gauging my scopes. I'm looking for it. I don't see any shit. There's no fucking anti-male, anti-white shit anywhere here. This is how fucking fragile you are. All you do have to do, you see a four minute fucking video of some black lady saying like, hey, we we should do more stand-up comedy. And you, this offends you so sincerely that you have to make a video in response to it where you bitch and whine and moan and make up bullshit Evo psych theories and how women are worse at comedy. And you say the video was legit because they're not telling jokes and because they're all not, at, and they're not also doing fitness routines and how and you lie about every point that they make and you still in spite of the fact that you are unquestionably the aggressor in this respect you still find an excuse to get offended it's so fucking sad can we all take a moment and chat just here let us put our hands together okay and can we take a moment to appreciate the fact that we're not a delicate snowflake white nationalist can we please just appreciate that because I cannot, I cannot imagine an existence more wretched, more overly sensitive, more pathetic than being the kind of person who would dredge up now this video is to complain they're anti-white and anti-male, bringing up the male suicide statistic at the beginning of the video when you definitely don't give a fuck about men, and overall demonstrating to the world that you have the thinnest skin. 
just the th just the thinnest, just paper thin, like tracing paper. If you hold James Allsup up to a light, you can see his internal organs and spine, small and malformed as it is. If we have a whole lot of perspectives, well, everyone wins. So what do we do? <laughs> I know. Get more women into comedy. How? People with power in comedy should work hard to book women, hire women, represent women, and mentor women. They're there. Hmm. Telling a bunch of rootless, transnational, globalist entertainment executives to... Whoa! Okay, so... <laughs> so... Under normal circumstances, I wouldn't say that this is Jewish question stuff, but again, seeing as how James Alsup is a white nationalist who believes in the Jewish question, I'm totally okay with saying this is a dog whistle. Hmm. So remember, all Jews believe that all entertainment is being run by like a secret cabal of Jewish overlords who are trying to destroy the Goyim by bringing in brown people. Hmm. Telling a bunch of rootless, transnational, globalist entertainment executives to work closely with and mentor more women? What could ever- Oh! Or go wrong with that idea. Whoa, w wait, wh what? Hey, we need more people in power helping women. Hey, you want to get raped, do you? What? This is the weakest gotcha. What? Nobody said about transnational globalist elites personally working with women, just that people in power should probably be a little bit more egalitarian when it comes to hiring and representing people. What the fuck is he going on about? This is the this is the most pathetic like out of context JQ like uh, fear mongering I've ever fucking seen. Way to fucking uh, Nazi pill your uh, your GamerGate audience that hopped on into this video. Jesus fucking Christ. And, but but like wait uh, follow the logic here. So the lady says, "Hey, people in power should do more to represent women in stand up comedy." And he says, huh, "Yeah, you want a bunch of shiftless Jewish elites to closely mentor your young women? You're probably raping them. Huh, is that what you want? Huh? I thought feminists opposed rape." Okay. Got him. More women in comedy starts with more girls in comedy, like me. Let's start by telling girls that it's good to be funny. That they're already funnier than they think. Right, this sounds like a great plan. Tell them that they are funny and brilliant already and- Again, this is uh, this kind of empowerment is what happens to men every single fucking day. White men in this country are the most cherished little bitch baby boys, the most spoiled pamper baby boys in the history of the fucking universe. Boys are taught every little fucking cute idea that you have in class. Oh, what a genius contribution. Ever How many fucking boys, by the way? Hey, in my audience, raise your fucking hands. If you're like a dude who coasted his way through high school because you were like the genius, you didn't care about the class classwork because huh your brain was so above the ideas and then you get to college and you realize you're utterly fucking average do you know why that happened it's because people pamper you're of a man they fucking wipe your ass for you they rub your little face oh what a great idea you're so smart men have the most bloated fucking egos on the planet so to turn around and say Hey, girls, you can do it. You're better than you think you are. It will then inspire James Allsup to go, <laughs> That's a great idea. Telling all women they're perfect. Wow, do you want women to go around raping and murdering? Because that's what they would do if you told them they were perfect. If it weren't for the fact that women are biologically designed to be subservient to men. Like, like again, this, ch this chicken little shit. And don't need to continue to develop their comedic skills. Nobody said not to develop their comedic skills. Ah, James Allsup, you are failing on every fucking level to make an argument. I'm sure they will just spontaneously and miraculously get as funny as their male counterparts who are encouraged to be more funny and outgoing as a result of aforementioned environmental and sociological pressures. Wait, if it's environmental and sociological, why did you say it was evolutionary in the past? If you agree with me that these are sociological and environmental pressures that can be changed, why did you lie at the beginning of the video and said that there was an evolutionary reason why women are less funny than men? Ooh, Alsup. Consistency Alsup. Slippering, slipping away from the point. Um, also, yeah, telling women to be confident and to believe in themselves. It's, this is like a fucking anime point. This is this point. Hey, you can do it. I believe in you. This point is so milk toast that it's the like triumphant conclusion to every single season one finale of a fucking anime, of like a shonen anime. Hey, Gambatane, 
you can you can do it. Believe in yourself. I tr- you're better than you think. This is literally like this is the most simple, basic tier one, you know, stage zero point zero, uh, it, alpha development, early development, like code version one point oh point oh point oh 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 variant of confidence. And James Alsop has a problem with it. Okay. This is this is such an excellent example of acting in bad faith because this is like a this is like an indefensible argument that he's making that you can't tell people to be confident and believe themselves. Literally nobody would say this under any other circumstances unless you just really hate women, I guess. <laughs> no, unless you can rearrange the entire gender power dynamic in the United States and o- we're working on it, okay? Override thousands of years of western cultural norms. Up uh- Western culture, as you understand it, has not been around for a thousand years. Another Nazi talking point. The idea that white Aryan lineage goes back until time immemorial. Nope. There have been tons of societies in the past that have had wildly different attitudes towards women's and men's roles in society in and without um, what you would consider to be Western culture. The Vikings, the Greeks, the Romans. There were periods of times in all of those societies where they engaged in behavior you would describe as um, <clears throat> libcucky. There are points in time where women are considered to be the owners of the home and the rulers of the country. There are points in time where women are considered to be warriors and masters and mistresses of the battlefield. There have been points in time where women are considered to be the sexual aggressors. This um, constant attempt by Nazis to paint history as this unfailing, unfaltering land landscape of one social order men on top white people on top it's just not true it's a lie they tell to um to legitimize the lie they're currently telling which is that white people are better and always have been better and men are better and always have been better it's the same lie every time the arguments don't change reshaping the comedic landscape is unlikely to happen let's tell them that being i mean over the past like hundred years the comedic landscape and society in general has changed irrevocably and on a on an unbelievable scale in regards to the inclusion of women and LGBT people and black people and shit. <laughs> James Alsop's like, huh, change the gender power dynamic? <laughs> That'll never happen, he says after the past century of it happening. Got him? Being funny means being exactly who they are already, just with a few more punchlines. Let's show girls that comedy is not the thing that dudes do that girls laugh at. Let's show girls that comedy is theirs. And that whether they want to be stand-up funny, or YouTube funny, or improv funny, or disarm a bully funny, or Snapchat funny, or just funny or stump speech for the class president funny. Comedy is power. And that power is theirs. Yeah, it literally isn't though. And by saying comedy belongs to girls, you're taking yet another thing away from boys. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god. (laughs) Oh god. The thinnest skin. I didn't expect that. That came out of left field. I didn't. Wow. That fucking got me. Uh, by letting comedy have women, you're taking it from boys. God, hey, I like how the the he evoked the fucking Gamergate crowd earlier. Jesus Christ! By letting girls play video games, you're taking this away from boys. Like, what am I supposed to say other than grow a thicker skin, you fucking snowflake? Comedy is an essential aspect of the human condition, and it belongs to everyone, okay? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry the boys don't... Ooh. I'm so sorry boys don't get to have it as an exclusive boys club forever. I'm so sorry, also. Boy Scouts, video games, the list goes on and on. Yeah, get fucked. I don't want anything to be for any one gender. Get the fuck out of here. I don't give a fuck. Taking another thing away from men. The comedic. You're not ta- hey, by the way, hey, you're not taking anything away from men by including women into it. Can you imagine if a, if a man wanted to take care of his child and the mother said, you can't do that. That's our thing. And, th- and she unironically got mad and said that you're taking something away from women if the father takes care of a kid. No. 
scientific arts have been pursued by the Western man ever since the Western man ancient Greece and likely even before that it's the Western man what okay it's okay if comedy is overwhelmingly male men no as we talked about earlier are predisposed to be no they're not predisposition implies biology and you earlier said that it's an environmental and sociological thing. Why do you keep jumping back and forth also? Why do you say evolutionary and then you say sociological and environmental and now you say predisposition? These mean very different things. Not that it means anything to you. I know you're not interested in being accurate or consistent. Being better at comedy. It's simply how we grow up. And there's nothing wrong with that that needs fixing. The most comedic thing about this entire video wasn't the jokes, if there even were any. It's how Kelly- There what? no, there really weren't. It's not a video about jokes. Wait, again, he's like rating the comedic value of this video? What the fuck are you talking about? It's not a comedy video. You don't watch this now this op-ed video to laugh. You watch it to hear women talk about comedy. Not to- what- what is he about to rate the comedic value of this- of this script? counterproductive this whole endeavor was people aren't going to come away you can't say it's a counterproductive endeavor when they put out like a four minute video that i'm sure was well received in its time and then you would go ahead and make a 14 minute video okay that wastes everyone's time lying about the contents of the video repeatedly making straw men making non-points making bad faith arguments invoking nazi rhetoric that then gets seen by three million people you have wasted infinitely more time of infinitely more people than anyone ever could have in the creation of the original video and you should be ashamed from this video thinking wow i can't wait to see a woman comedian that's not what the video is about the video is not about hyping men up to see a woman comedian does he do you think james Alsup is like disabled is this ableist because i i unironically think that he's made dozens of points in this video and not a single one of them has been a response to the points made in the original video i feel like he's a child stuffing crayons up his nose and i have to keep like gingerly like pulling them out and knocking the back of his head and saying like mm -mm, no no i have to gently lead him over to the point and then he wanders off again maybe like a dog like a very excitable dog or something I don't know. I think dogs follow like their masters a lot, <laughs> a lot more consistently than he's followed the point of this video. People will come away with the impression, and for good reason, mind you, that if they don't laugh at a female comedian, they're going to be seen as guilty of sexism or- Nope. Literally nobody said that. I am the most libcucky dude around, and I don't say that. I have seen plenty of unfunny female comedians, and I usually say, hey, that was some unfunny shit. I have never seen female comedy. I didn't watch the fucking Ghostbusters remake and watch that and go, oh, I didn't find that funny. I must still have sexism in my veins. Uh, uh, I didn't no one does this and nobody is asking for anyone to do this this is a straw man you're propping up to make the the fucking white dudes who was who were not affected by this video in any way shape or form perpetuate a feeling of victimization because somewhere out there in the world somewhere in the cosmos there are women who are thinking about making society better for women that's all this video is. This is about riling up and playing on the fears, anger, misinformation, and stupidity of a broad audience to simultaneously get them angry about the fact that women exist and want things, and, for you specifically, to bring them over to Nazi talking points. Or misogyny, and it's better not to take that chance. Complaining like this and making weird references to legal action against people that don't laugh at women. L I, can't, I can't see. This is what I'm actually asking. Do you think that James Alsup is deliberately making a bad faith argument or do you think he's actually retarded? L like, I'm being serious. Like, like l no reasonable person could look at what that woman said where she said that mistreatment in the industry could sometimes be illegal and think that she meant suing people who don't laugh can you can you please i i like i actually want to know and chat you can get offended that i said retard all you want but i actually need to know an answer to this question because this is like an unfathomable level of stupidity that i don't know how to grapple with i have to assume that it's in bad faith i have no idea yeah i mean nazis always lie but this is really dumb that like i know he's lying and i know he knows he's lying but if nothing else, the audience has to be really stupid to buy that. Furthers the two types of comedy divide that they were just complaining about. 
comedy audiences don't have a problem laughing at women if they're actually funny. But that's sociologically proven to not be true. Um, there is tons of evidence to suggest that women who make cogent points in, say, boardroom meetups or even in social settings where they might have to perform comedically are held to a higher standard, are given less time, less respect, and less credence. This is just a fact. I, I don't know if he doesn't like facts or... But there's nothing less funny than being forced to enjoy a comedian because of... Nobody said you have to be forced to enjoy it, Deuterino. You can stay at home if you want. Affirmative action and social justice. Nobody said affirmative action. This is not a government program. God, fuck. I feel like I can't say anything you guys will make you... And then we've got, for the sixth time... <sighs> the same portrait video... Well, you're triggering us! <laughs> to understand the words that are coming out of your mouth. Stunning. Wait, that's the end of the story? She got heckled relentlessly by a guy who s demanded she make him a sandwich. He called her triggered and he yelled a bunch and he crawled around on his hands and knees like a fucking degenerate. And then she was like, eh, I don't really want to do this anymore. I'm out. And this is meant to be an indication of women not being able to deal with stand up comedy. Do you know how many videos I've seen of dudes freaking out at way less heckling than that? Seriously, everyone in chat, have you seen a video of a male comedian, probably a much larger one, getting way the fuck angrier and acting way more embarrassing over much less heckling than that? Because I have. I've seen that. Yeah. As I guess, as a final point to this particular video, and I don't know why I'm saying this, because no, anyone who found that video compelling is going to disagree with me. But if you enjoyed that video or if you think there's like a point in that video... You're st you are stupid, and your brain is faulty. There's something wrong. Every single point James Alsop made there was a lie. He literally constantly misrepresented every point made in the video. If your ideas are valid, that is to say, if the things you believe are true and just, if the things you believe are legitimate and you want to make good arguments for them, you shouldn't have to lie. I don't lie. I have never lied on this channel. I don't need to. Because I'm right.